And welcome to the Charlotte Coliseum for the ACC championship game in this tournament. Sixth ranked Georgia Tech, or number six seed rather, against top ranked North Carolina. Hi everybody, I'm Tim Branton. Glad you could join us this afternoon for this game. It has to be the biggest surprise, I think, to everybody in the Atlantic Coast Conference that Georgia Tech is playing Carolina today. Many thought it perhaps Duke or Florida State or Wake Forest, but nope, it's Georgia Tech. As a matter of fact, they've got the hottest hand in the tournament right now. Here he is, James Forrest. He had 27 points against Duke, 26 against Clemson. And yesterday, we had an opportunity to speak with him about the hot hand in this tournament. You know, I came into the tournament thinking, well, James, you know, it's time for, it's time you have to step up to the plate in order for Georgia Tech to compete for the ACC championship or to even make it to the NCAA tournament. You have to step your game up because, you know, a lot of my teammates look up to me as that way. And, you know, it's something that I had to do and it's something that I set my mind that I was going to do. And, you know, it, the good things have just been happening. It has been a wild year for Georgia Tech. It has been a wild year, and it's been an interesting tournament. All kinds of bizarre things going on for the first time ever. We have the five, six, and seven teams advanced for, from the quarterfinals. We had some very interesting weather. We've had power outages. So it wouldn't be at all inconsistent for an inconsistent team like Georgia Tech to maybe pull off the upset. All right, Dan, we'll be back with more of our pregame. But first, this word from our good friends at Bud Drive. If you want year Dean Smith 23 straight 20 win seasons 12 ACC titles the players are all set to go Georgia Tech really has its work cut out for it today and they could do well in looking at what Virginia did in the first half yesterday against North Carolina George Lynch who you just saw held to no points Eric Montross held to one shot attempt Georgia Tech would love to be able to do that today It'll be North Carolina ball. Touched by Georgia Tech. During the regular season, Carolina beat Georgia Tech twice. 80-67 in Chapel Hill and 77-66 in Atlanta. Here's that widely spread 2-3 zone that has been very effective for Georgia Tech thus far in this tournament. Rodel at the point with Phelps out. Montross has him on the board. It's almost unfair for a guy that size to go out about seven feet for the basket and stick the jump shot. Man to man for North Carolina. This is Barry, a fire for three. Gets his own rebound. Air ball by Martise Moore. Martise Moore, of course, playing his first ACC title game. He may be a little tight. Williams fires top of the key. Outside the rotor. Back into the big guy, Reese in the paint. Good pump fake. And the follow by Lynch. That's great movement without the basketball. Reese cuts to the basket, gets the pass from Montross. The defense has to collapse, so they get the tip. Great ball movement. Forrest with the turnaround. 75% of his shots he's hitting this tournament. You know, I think I throw him the ball every time. Absolutely. Solid strategy. <laughs> Montross at the top of the key. One thing that was fairly effective for other teams as Roto turns it over there on the pass has been the dribble penetration against this Georgia Tech zone. Martise Moore in and out. Whistle away from the ball. That foul is going to be against Roto. And what Georgia Tech did right there was run the ball up quickly against Dean Smith's Tar Heels and try to get a basket in transition. They were very successful with that, both in the opening round game against Duke and then in the semifinals against Clemson. Martise Moore, I think, could be a key performer in this basketball game. He's going to have some open shots. He's got to fill up the basket. ACC Rookie of the Week several times during the regular season. Makes this one. The foul on Rodel was his first. In fact, Moore was rookie of the year four times in the, uh, or rookie of the week, excuse me, four times. Is a leading candidate for rookie of the year. Rodel, of course, gets the start today because of the injury to Derek Phelps. Phelps very sore. They think he'll be ready by Thursday. There he is. And we're tied at four. Look at Derek. And he is awfully sore. 
second shot. Awfully hard off the iron. The long rebound ahead to Barry. Barry did a great job passing the basketball. Tied the two-game record for assists in the quarterfinals and semifinal games. Barr is calling for the ball. I'd give it to him. Man-to-man -man defense. Barry fires for three. He barely shot the ball yesterday. Has two shots right out of the blocks here. Seems to be a very confident young fella. Jackets out to a 7-4 lead. North Carolina hasn't gotten the perimeter shot to go down. That's good defense by Barry. Nice movement by Georgia Tech on the defensive end. Shot clock at 19. Lynch goes inside, rebound Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech wants to run. Mackey gets it to oh, back to the forest, and he misses the shot. Nice job by Lynch to get back on transition defense. Forrest should have dunked that. Showing his versatility there as he's jumping up to get the rebound. He felt like Montross was over his back. And so while he's going for the ball, he was shouting, Oh, Mr. Ref. Reese goes out. Sullivan comes in for the Tar Heels. Montross makes it and is fouled. Just throwing the ball up on the inbounds play. Bobby Kramich, you see him stand there saying, hey, get your hands up, don't foul the guy. Think. Just throw the ball up in the air. Mackey really too far under the basket. Montross with his power just takes the ball up, gets it in the basket, gets the foul on Mackey. And he converts the three-point play to tie the game at seven. And North Carolina has been living at the free throw line in the first two games of this ACC tournament. Really been attacking the basket hard, and it's been paying off with free throws. 16 and a half minutes to go in the first half. Carolina's at 86% of their free throws in this tournament. North Carolina now goes to a zone. Inside to go to Forrest. Can't get the roll. was back defending the perimeter. Sullivan off the bench hits the three. That perimeter game hasn't been there in the first five, four minutes for North Carolina. Stepped on the line. Turnover, Yellow Jackets. That's their first. And with 15.55 to go in the first half, 10-7 Tar Heels. We'll be back after this word from our friends at Bud Drive. Side, you move without the basketball, good things are going to happen. Scott Cherry in the game now for North Carolina. See the shot selection. It's been a game of runs. North Carolina went on a 4 0 run. Georgia Tech countered with a 7 0 run. And now Carolina back on a 6 0 run. You know, Georgia Tech right now is playing a box and one against Montrose. Sullivan for two more. Sullivan hit the two point shot to Brian Hill, of all people is matched up against Eric Montross. He's taking a page out of the old North Carolina State book. Pass inside the hill for and the layup. Hill banks it in. North Carolina State used to play big guys, opposing big guys with Chris Corciani matched up in a box and one. And that's exactly what Georgia Tech's doing. Hill is matched up against Montross man to man. Everybody else is playing zone. Carolina by three. A great job by Montrose to get the pass out. Cherry shot is hard. Here's Sullivan. Nice pass inside the Lynch. North Carolina just really very, very good at the way they react to what the other team does. Of course, having great players helps. Every time Forrest touches the ball, they jump him. Carolina back to the man-to-man. -man. George Lynch matched up against James Forrest. Mackey to Hill. And Best will fire. That's a tough matchup for Cherry, particularly when Best is going to use screens moving without the ball. There's Carolina transition very quickly. Followed by Montreux. And the foul. He is so big, it's hurting. 
virtually impossible to stop that. Not only big, but strong and talented. Well, what you're hoping for in that particular situation, with Brian Hill, you see Brian Hill, number 11, he's blocking out Montrose. Montrose just too powerful, just pushes him out of the way, rebounds it right over him, then he gets fouled by uh, Mackey. It was, they called it on Hill. On Hill, okay. That'll be his first. Well, that's a break for Georgia Tech because you don't want Mackey with that second personal foul so early in the ball game. But what you're doing with Hill in there, you don't expect Hill to block Montrose out by himself. You're hoping that Mackey or Forrest or somebody will be there as well. Awfully smooth, isn't he? Yeah. He's really had a very, very fine year for North Carolina. Martise Moore coming in. Barry will get a breather. Montrose has six. And he makes them both. 16 to 11 is our score. South Carolina leads. Montrose going out. 14-13 to go in the first half. North Carolina showing some pressure. This is one thing Bobby Cremens was concerned about before the basketball game. How well his team will handle the North Carolina pressure. Tim Grant and Dan Bonner with you. This is the ACC Tournament Championship game. Reese throws it away. It's hard to throw it over a seven-foot guy, and that's what Best tried to do. You got to throw a little higher, Travis. That is two turnovers now for the Tar Heels. To North Carolina with four offensive rebounds and nine second chance points. They haven't created easy opportunities with their press yet, but they have created with their inside power, getting those offensive rebounds. They can hurt you in a variety of ways. Travis Best working against Williams. Over to Moore. Nice help against Forrest. Barks fires. Now Forrest is going to set that screen out at the top of the key for Travis Best. If he'll just rotate into a shooting area, then I think he's going to get a lot of jump shots like that. With Montross out of the game, Georgia Tech back to the straight zone. Tar Heels lead by three. Inside to Sullivan. Nice pass by Rodel. Sullivan has seven points. This is Forrest. Over to Moore. Forrest with the follow. Great activity on the boards by Georgia Tech. Not able to convert. Three on two, Carolina. He walked. Travel. Williams. Turnover number three. Tim, that's a perfect example, that last sequence. When you get an easy opportunity against North Carolina, you better convert it because just like that, they'll take the ball and turn your easy opportunity into an easy one for them. Fortunately for Georgia Tech, they turned it over. North Carolina, a little sloppy ball handling early in the basketball game, and despite that, they have a five-point lead. As hot as Forrest has been, he's missed two close shots. He's been very close and has gone to the left hand. George Lynch back in the ballgame for the Tar Heels. Nice pass. Mackey misses the dunk. That's exactly what you were talking about. Now here, here they get that's a, almost a sure basket. Now North Carolina out running their secondary break. George Tech's done. Got the defense entirely set. Salvadori with the left hander banks it. It's a four-point turnaround right there. North Carolina now up to their biggest lead. Foul on Williams. After the dunk, North Carolina gets down the court. Georgia Tech still trying to set the defense. Salvadori takes it aggressively inside. Georgia Tech cannot afford to let the North Carolina big guys, either Montross or Salvadori, wheel into the lane like that. They've got to get some pressure in there. Dante Calabria comes into the game now. Sullivan will get a breather. Sullivan played extremely well. And he has seven points. Fouls on Donald Williams. Newville with a good pump fake. Well, he's drilled by Lynch and Salvadori. From the standpoint that he got the foul, it was a good pump fake. But from the standpoint that he got murdered, he shouldn't have pumped fake. Got them both up in the air quickly, didn't he? <laughs> Alan Lynch. It's a good idea to get the guys up in the air, but one is 6'8", of almost 240 pounds, and a player, and the other guy's a 7-foot guy, and they're going to land on top of you. you got to think about that. 
The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports. Any use of this broadcast without their express permission is prohibited. Got to look at Bobby Kremens talking to Malcolm Mackey, probably saying something to him and along the lines of make dunks. Newville is normally a 54% free throw shooter, but had a nice touch on those two. Now well, we've been talking about all the strange things that have been going on here this weekend, Tim. Barry almost has the steal. Lynch gets it back to Salvadori on the baseline. Now Barry does pick it off. Hill gets his own rebound. And this will be on Salvadori. That was a tremendous job by Barry to get the ball up the court, and Hill took it inside. He's got great strength. Watch this pass by Barry. He catches Hill right in stride. He misses the shot, but watch him. He just comes right back down and gets it. George Lynch is in position. Salvador gets the foul, but Georgia Tech really scrapping early in the basketball game. Salvador goes out. Montrose comes back into the game. Hill at the line. He has three points. His free throws are the easiest opportunities you're going to get. And if you're going to pull an upset against a team like in North Carolina, you're going to have to convert your free throws. Newbill did. Georgia and Hill does, too. Six of six in this basketball game from the free throw line. 11.45 to go in the first half. It's 20 to 17 Tar Heels. 11.45 to go in the first half. North Carolina leads. 20 to 17. I've got those exactly uh, reversed there. Mackey's the one with uh, zero points. Montross has seven, but you get the idea there. Montross dominating the center matchup. Montross gets it back and banks it in. Not a very good pass on the alley oop, but if you get another seven foot guy in there, you figure if the ball's loose, he's got a pretty good shot at it. He got it, laid it in. Turnover and the foul. It'll be on Forrest. That's Georgia Tech's third turnover, Tim. In the first two first two games against North Carolina, they shot the ball well, they rebounded the ball well, but they turned it over 18 times in each game. And Bobby Kremens, you can see the expression on his face. He knows that his team absolutely cannot turn the ball over to North Carolina. Newville goes out of the game. Malcolm Mackey comes back in. John Barry frustrated at himself for throwing that pass. Looks like he threw it right to Rolo. Looks like he's trying to throw it to Rolo. Williams hasn't been able to get it to go from the perimeter. Lynch with the rebound, puts it back, and Moore has the rebound. But North Carolina's been able to get an awful lot of offensive rebounds early. North Carolina trying to set the traps. Best kicks it back out, and Forrest buries it. And when they try to set the traps and you move the ball out of the traps, you can get open jump shots. Forrest hit that one. Reese looked like he was going to go, then takes it in and has it taken away. Forrest on the transition. A nice move by Forrest. Williams in position to draw the charge. Forrest went right by with the glide. That whole thing started when Brian Reese passed up an open perimeter shot, took it into the teeth of that zone and lost the ball. Forrest has eight points, and it's a one-point game. Tar Heels lead. Montrose. Offensive goaltending by Lynch. The basket is ruled off. Offensive interference. You can't touch the ball when it's on the ring. George Lynch knows that he did it. But again, you get the ball into Montrose. The defense collapses. Nobody's blocking out George Lynch. Georgia Tech has not shut off the inside. North Carolina has been cold from the outside. Under 10 minutes to play in the first half. Here's Barry. Martins Moore. There's that open shot we talked about that you got to be able to hit. Outlet pass to Williams. Nice defense by Travis Best. Oh, good outlet. Travis Best has been quiet. Here comes North Carolina. They got four on two. Williams can't find anybody. Now they go back inside to Reese, and he misses the dunk. Second time we've seen missed dunks in this game. Oh, 
Can you believe him? Yes, I can believe him. I've seen this two days in a row. Incredible for Forrest. He's got 10 points. Travis Best very nearly gets the steal. Ball goes inside. The defense covers down. Pass it back outside. You got a hot shooter. Get the ball in his hands. He talked with us before the basketball game about how he came into this tournament with the idea that he would step up his game. I think he's accomplished that. A forest fire. Oh, stop that. <laughs> Here's Salvadori. Oh, Cherry with the follow. Salvadori can't get it back. Boy, how many offensive rebounds for North Carolina? <laughs> Sullivan walks. And again, North Carolina a little sloppy with the basketball. That's seven turnovers now for the Tar Heels in the first 11 and a half minutes. The very few times this year when North Carolina has struggled, turnovers have been part of the equation. They double down on Best. He gets it out to Newbill. See if that's Forrest setting that screen. He turns around and has a jump shot. Newbill can do nothing more but take the ball and pass it to somebody else from out there. That's a tough pass. Forrest thought he was coming out. Instead, he broke for the basket. Malcolm Mackey and Forrest threw it out of bounds. Four turnovers now for the Yellow Jackets. Bobby Kremen saying, come on, James. If you're just joining us, Derek Phelps is not playing today. No foul call. Great post defense. Best to Hill. That's Forrest. And followed by Forrest. That's Forrest. Hill is down. He's hurt. Almost the same spot where Derek Phelps got hurt yesterday. Well, it looked like the same spot on the floor and the same spot on the body. There's a look at Derek Phelps. 7.47 to go in the first half. North Carolina 22. But the Jackets have gone out to a three-point lead. Now this from Pepsi. Think about how you... Any better than James Forrest. Told you this was a game of runs. Georgia Tech now on a 12-2 spurt. North Carolina just one basket in the last four and a half minutes. Georgia Tech was worried about committing turnovers and have North Carolina turn them into baskets. It's been the Tar Heels committing turnovers and the Yellow Jackets turning them into baskets. Man-to-man -man defense. Tech by three with seven and a half minutes to go in the first half.
Tim, this is a very interesting first 14 minutes we've had. North Carolina is a team that comes in. They have made more than twice as many free throws as their first two opponents have attempted in this tournament. And their trips to the free throw line have been very infrequent today. That foul was against Newbill, but North Carolina has not been able to get the ball inside and draw the fouls. Carolina, only three free throw attempts on the day. They made all three, so Reese is going to the line here for the fourth. Bars gets a breather. This is James Bars just a minute ago. This is why he was taken out of the game. Well, they can't afford to lose him. Possibly a cramp. Remember, this is the third game in three days, and he's played it maximum all out for the first two, so it wouldn't be surprising if he had some leg cramps. Reese makes them both. The lead is five as we approach the six-minute mark of the first half. North Carolina shows zone. Expect the traps. Georgia Tech has handled it pretty well so far. out of the game more becomes more important offensively. Best. Newville with the rebound back to best from beyond the arc. Lynch banks it in. Offensive. Offensive foul on Lynch. That's his second. Bit of a force there by George Lynch. It was actually a two on three break. There was three yellow jackets back there. George Lynch trying to force it to the basket. You see, Lynch is getting past Barry, and Best has all day to set up inside waiting for him. Here he comes again. He's past Barry, but Best is standing right there waiting for him. No bucket. They take it off the scoreboard. Travis Best, again, from long range, cannot hit it. James Forrest is back at the table. Has such a great first step. Freed up and hit the jumper. He's got six points now. The zone for the Tar Heels. Martise Moore from way down in the corner, and that's for three. The freshman now has five points. Barry doing a great job being the middleman. Receives the pass from one end and gets it to the other. Straight zone defense again for Georgia Tech. Lynch walked. Boy, another turn. That's 11 turnovers for North Carolina. It's about the fifth traveling violation, too. I think you have to attribute that to the Georgia Tech size inside. Guys are catching it in there, trying to give fakes before they start their dribble, and they're moving their pivot foot. James Bars back in the ball game. Seven of ten for Bars. So the best thing to do now is locate him. <laughs> Malcolm Mackey picks up foul number two. Bobby Clemens. Scratches his head about that one. This is something Dean Smith was concerned about yesterday. He thought Montross was fouled quite a bit yesterday. Well, North Carolina has such depth and such size that if you're a team like Georgia Tech that has good size but not great depth, you worry about getting worn down in there. There's a penetration again that gets to the free throw line. Best is called. That's his first for reaching in. Georgia Tech has to be very pleased with the way the first 16 minutes of this basketball game has gone for them. They've, they haven't turned the ball over while they... they aren't entirely happy with their inside defense. They are ahead in the game at this point by six points, but the game's a 40-minute affair, and North Carolina is going to keep coming at you in waves. <laughs> Reese misses the free throw. He's been on a tear the last nine games. He had 16 points yesterday. You know, coming into this game, North Carolina has made 53 free throws in the tournament. Their opponents, only 10 that's coming in. That's the, st the statistics for today. Reese makes the second one. Five-point lead for the Yellow Jackets. 
Cross with another rebound. That's and five. Get, and you got to get away from the big guy because he makes the quick outlet pass, and now here they've got a transition opportunity. Reese misses the bank. Good scrap on the defensive end. Both these teams really playing hard. Time out on the floor with 3.44 to go. We'll be back after a word from our good friends at Budweiser. Zero points. You can see right there, North Carolina only shooting 40%. Over their last 11 games, they've shot almost 50%. I think that's an indication of what that young man means to this North Carolina basketball team. Brian Hill needs help and cannot get it in in the five seconds allotted. And so Georgia Tech now has its sixth turnover of the game. North Carolina with their defense makes even getting the ball inbounds an adventure. Bobby Cremins telling the officials that's too quick. Bobby wants to include three or four Mississippis in between every count. <laughs> Don't start. Sullivan left alone. Foul is called on Forrest, and that'll be his second. We oh. talked about the inside power of North Carolina and how they were going to be relentless in their attack. Mackey with two, Forrest with two. And they're over the limit now, so Carolina will go to the line shooting one and one. Eric Montrose. North Carolina again, back to the free throw line. We've talked about how many times they've been to the line. 61 in the first two games of the tournament combined. This is their eighth trip to the line today. And they've been converting all their opportunities. Montrose now with 10 points. North Carolina. He's special. Wears double zero. Wears his hair extra short. <laughs> Conservationist. Outspoken. Carolina fans love him. And he's got a terrific game. He's got 11 points. Five for five from the free throw line. Moore left alone from the other side. This is for three. Great ball movement against the trap. You get the open jump shot, you knock it down. 35-29, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech back to that 1-3 with chaser defense, guarding Donald Williams man-to-man -man with Drew Barry. Now for James Forrest, you've got two fouls, and you've got to be very careful. You don't want to get your third on a charge or an over-the-back call. Now what? This foul gets the foul. foul. He fouled Drew Barry. Dean Smith doesn't think so. What about Montross dribbling the ball up himself? Barry was very created that situation in its entirety by refusing to let Montross get the ball to Rodel. And then Roto tried to give Montrose some room with a screen, and it was a moving screen. Two Another 40. turnover. 2.40 to go in the first half. Zone defense again for North Carolina. 1-3-1. One, one. George Lynch running the baseline. Best. Best has sure. not shot the ball well in this first half, despite that Georgia Tech leads. Drills it. That's his first field goal to have. It's a tray. First points from North Carolina's backcourt. They have not shot the ball well, particularly from the perimeter. Carolina fans on their feet. The lead has been cut to three. Forrest goes out of the game. Don't want him to pick up his third foul, but of course you got Mackey back in the game with two, so you're running a risk there as well. Mackey, Barry, Best, Newbel, and Moore. And Best misses again. Boy, Best just hasn't been able to get it to go. Best is one for seven. Reese is shot too hard. Fight for the rebound. Tech gets it. The outlet to Best. the middleman again. Drew Barry, the ball goes to Barry and kicks it back. Barry has had a very impressive
defensive tournament in a quiet way. Hasn't been scoring a lot of points, but he's been great from the assist in the assist column. Jackets by five. Still chasing Donald Williams around, man-to-man, -man best is. It's the defense they used effectively against Chris Whitney. Reese banks it in. He's fouled. Newbill. Newbill picked up the foul. That's right, Tim. Newbill, Newbill fouled as Reese went by. You can see here, North Carolina very active against this defense. What great spring in the legs of Reese. He carries the ball up there, protects it, and draws the foul. Back to the line again go the Tar Heels. Seven thirty-five. Cherry comes back in. Calabria goes out for Carolina. North Carolina now nine of ten from the free throw line. They haven't shot the ball well, but nine of ten from the free throw line. They continue to attack the basket, and they're staying in the game at the line. Hill back in the game. Mackey goes out as we approach the one-minute mark. Clock at 40, shot clock at 32. Box and one. Lynch got caught in the air. And this foul will be on Hill, his second. Well, Lynch got caught in the air, but it's nice to have double zero running through the lane there. Travis Best doing a great job. Just splits the middle of the defense. Nobody's there. Montrose not really known as a shot blocker, more of an intimidator, and Best just makes the great right-handed move to get it past him. Montrose has eight rebounds to go along with his 11 points in the first half. Five for five from the line. Montross moved so well without the basketball, and it was his movement with the, without the ball that created that play, because if Lynch gets caught up in the air and has no place to throw it, it's a turnover, but here's Montross coming across the lane, being where he's supposed to be. Nice job. Had a look at Mackey and Forrest on the bench for Georgia Tech. Salvadori will check into the ball game. Oh, now this is always an interesting part of the game. I, in, at the end of the first half, a team like Georgia Tech now, they're going to try to hold the ball for the last shot. North Carolina is going to pressure them everywhere. It's going to be hard to hold it for the last shot. Best beats the breast, gets it to Hill. 30 seconds left. Barry penetrates and scores. Okay, they're not going to hold it for the last shot. Never mind. That ball went all the way down in and almost came back out. You were almost a little premature with your call, my friend. Now North Carolina going to hold it for the last shot. Bobby Kremen's telling his guys get back in the 2-3 zone. Hill's not paying attention. Long rebound. Best has it. Ahead to Hill. Wow, what a first half. Very entertaining first half. Both teams getting up and down the court. Montross really a force inside for North Carolina. James Forrest with 14 points in the first half. Montross with 13 points, eight rebounds for North Carolina. Drew Barry now has a tournament record with 27 assists, and we've still got another half to go. Let the band play on. 41-37 is our score at the half. Basketball game, Georgia Tech putting an awful lot of pressure on Williams. Williams only one for seven, one for five from beyond the three-point line. James Forrest, Drew Barry just had a tremendous first half. North Carolina really misses him. Boy, do they ever. Derek Phelps awfully sore today, but the good news is no fractures. The pass to Forrest is blocked from behind by Lynch. And Forrest is cramping up again. Forrest has a couple of seconds to walk that off as he heads to the free throw line. Again, we have to point out that these kids have played hard for two days in a row. 
the third personal on Lynch. And there's some pretty good looking muscles that could cramp up in there. When your leg cramps up, it's much smaller muscles than that. And he makes the first one. 15 points for James Forrest. job off the inbounds play to start the second half. Best gets it in the scoring position and they convert quickly. Williams takes the jumper. This is for two. Lynch with a nice rebound. Again, another offensive rebound by North Carolina. They got a lot of those early in the first half. Tar Heels moving the ball around the perimeter. Back to the zone defense. 2-3 zone. Montrop. You can hear one of the Georgia Tech players shout help as the ball went into Montrose, and you can certainly understand that sentiment. He has 15 points now. Man-to-man -man defense for North Carolina. Marquise Moore had a real good first half. Hit some open jump shots. Two for three from three-point range. Bobby Patterson. Patterson. Move, move. Clock at 18. Kremis trying to get him to move, trying to get this offense going. Shot clock under 10. I don't know that they realize how much time's left in the shot clock. Best does. Fires it up. Montrose with another rebound. Mackey takes it away from him, but loses it by stepping on the baseline. He and Montrose bounced off one another there, Master. That's why Mackey stepped on the baseline. Good no call in terms of a foul there. They just were going after the basketball. That's good defensive sequence by North Carolina. Forced a very difficult shot at the end of the 45 second clock. Lynch. Moore with the rebound. Travis Best gets it ahead to Forrest and he has it blocked by Rodel. Nice transition defense there. Oh, what a step. And what a step race. to the basket. Brian Reese. The bucket's good. He'll go to the line. Foul is on Marquise Moore. Georgia Tech running in transition. They don't get it. And now North Carolina turns back around. There's four Tar Heels. So you got to figure that four Georgia Tech guys are back. But even though there's four Georgia Tech guys back, Reese with that tremendous step gets around more. Draws the foul. Eight points, three rebounds today. He averages 11 points. A junior from the Bronx. North Carolina comes out, starts the second half very strongly. It's a one-point game. defensively at the moment. Forrest oh, wanted a foul call. There is none. Here comes Williams. Forrest has that Mr. Ref routine down. Oh, no. Backward. Backward. And Williams has called for the offensive foul. Threw that shoulder out. Got Drew Barry right underneath the chin. And Barry really sold the call by falling backwards. That head snapped back and he started stumbling backwards. It's a good defensive play. Take one for the team. <laughs> Barry squares up. Lynch with another rebound. North Carolina dominating the boards early in the second half. Carolina so talented, so deep. Reese gets his own rebound, takes it back strong. Nobody blocked him out. The shooter ran all the way in from the corner, got his own rebound. Carolina leads. Their last lead was at 22-21 at 10-10 of the first half. Third. And 
as Roto picks up that third foul, keep in mind that Derek Phelps not playing today with that bruised tailbone. Brian Hill checks back in for the Yellow Jackets. Barry goes out. Georgia Tech scored the first two points of the half on two James Forrest free throws, so they do not have a field goal. We played over three minutes. Excellent North Carolina defense to come out of the locker room here. George Lynch really doing a nice job helping out against Mackey. Great job by Lynch. Never let that ball get inside to Mackey. Turnover by the Yellow Jackets. Tar Heels are on a roll. Bobby Kremens with his hands on his hips. Rodel takes it all the way to the basket. Bobby Kremens wants a timeout. Also talked about streaky basketball and the Tar Heels now on a 9-0 run. Another turnover. That's two times in this basketball game that Georgia Tech's turned it over, being unable to get the ball inbounds. On cross is blocked. Here comes Barry. It's a three on two. Offensive foul called against Malcolm Mackey. That is three on Mackey. Carolina has not only been solid defensively on the has set half court defense, but they've been solid on the transition defense. Rodel has one block shot and he just took a charge. Now North Carolina throws it away. 14 turnovers now for North Carolina. You know, Tim, we talk about this being a game of runs, and it seems that every time North Carolina sort of gets to the top of the run, they start getting sloppy with the basketball, and that enables Georgia Tech to climb back in. 15-40 to go in the ball game. The defensive intensity by North Carolina in the second half has really been tremendous. Carolina leads by three. Montrose with a block. Three guys around four. with a big rebound and put back. All North Carolina right now. Barry can't get it. Travis Best really needs to become part of this offense in the second half. We haven't heard from him at all. Tar Heels have put it in high gear. They double out on Best, jump him, extend the defense, and now here's Hill. trap again. Forrest with a turnaround. And every time that they've desperately needed a basket, Forrest has been there. That's only the first, that's the first field goal for Georgia Tech in the second half. They've only got four points in this half. Forrest has all four. Cuts the lead back to three. They went almost six minutes before they got their first field goal. Excellent defense by North Carolina. Williams' jump shot is for two. And that's got to be a matter of concern for Georgia Tech. The perimeter game is what hasn't been there for North Carolina. If they're going to get that in gear now to go along with this defense that they're playing, Georgia Tech could be in trouble. Boy, Forrest really moving his body to get across the lane. Goes up over top of Lynch. And George Lynch called with the foul, and that is his fourth. Well, it's not a very easy task being matched up against a guy like James Forrest. George Lynch is an excellent defensive player, but a lot of his defensive time comes guarding guys in the post, and James Forrest just is not your classic 6'8 post guy. James Forrest is a guy who can take the ball on the perimeter, and in so doing, he's created some problems today for George Lynch. So 
Lynch goes out. Salvador in the game. Sullivan in the game. Now, we said that Montross is not known as a shot blocker. Well, he can block shots. You know, when you're seven feet tall, weigh 270 pounds, you just go in there and take the ball away from James Forrest. Forrest has been the offense in the second half. They've got five points. He's got them all. Been the offense in this tournament. 19 now. was out of the game and North Carolina puts in Salvadori who's another seven foot guy. So they got two seven foot guys. You take out Lynch who's a great player but you put in a seven foot guy. That's not too bad. Here's the big fella. George Tech counters with a big lineup. Penetration by Best. Barry tipped that ball in. How did it get it? It's a one-point game. George Tech in that zone that they've played almost the entire game. This is two. But he missed. Barnes comes down and back. whips it out the best. And we've got a technical foul on the North Carolina bench. It's called on the players. The technical foul is not called against Dean Smith. The guy's down on the end of the North Carolina bench. I think it was Ed Gath that they stuck. Smith's out of the coach's box complaining about the call. He better be careful or he's going to get a tee. I think they called that technical foul on Ed Geth. Down at the end of the North Carolina bench, you had four guys stand up to complain that there should have been a foul called against James Forrest. I think that's the guy they got right there in the middle of your picture. It's one of those fellas. Now watch Dean Smith in the background. Montross shoots the ball. Here comes James Forrest. Forrest gets it. Now he turns. Montross gets in there. There's the shoulder. Dean Smith thinks it should be a, call, a charge. Dean Smith gesturing, but the referee turned around, and I thought he pointed at one of the guys on the end of the bench. Six one, half dozen of the other, though. The coach gets the bench technical, so Dean Smith has to be careful. He gets one. Best hits the free throw. Best misses that one. Now, Dean Smith gets two himself. In other words, if there's two called on Dean Smith, he's ejected from the game. It takes three of those bench technicals. 12.39 to go in the championship game, and we are tied at 50. Oh, well, we'll have to check that out, but I don't think that technical foul was called on Dean Smith. I thought it was called on the bench. Mackey steps on the line. And that's the way you come back from that type of a play. You don't hang your head and think that the referees are after you. That's the way you come back. That's the third time in this basketball game Georgia Tech's lost the ball because they couldn't run an inbounds play. Williams. In and out. Salvadori with the follow. So Salvadori caused the turnover, then scores the bucket. Another offensive rebound. Best is fouled. He scores. Sullivan picks up the personal. Said Travis Best would be well advised to get in the game offensively, and he's certainly done that. You know, this was a very intense basketball game to start with. That technical foul seems to have picked up the intensity. Nobody stops Best Sullivan. Clearly belts him across the arm. Somebody's got to step in here and draw the charge. Salvadori's trying to block Mackey out, so he's not able to step in. And as a result, Best gets all the way to the basket. Montrose goes out. Scott Cherry comes in. Rodel goes out. Lynch is on the bench. Salvadori, Sullivan, Cherry, Williams, and Reese on the floor right now for the Tar Heels. And we've had it confirmed that that technical foul was called on the North Carolina bench. The players at the end of the bench. Now, no one player was singled out. The players. Georgia Tech takes back the lead, 53-52. There's that zone defense again. Reese 
has been very effective in the second half against this defense, finding some openings, particularly with offensive rebounds. Mackey with a rebound. Gives it up to Best. He pushes hard and fires for three. Barry comes up with it. And scores. Boy, he's had a couple of big stick backs in this half. What a tournament that young man's had. stretch right now for North Carolina with Montross and Rodel and Lynch all on the bench. Some real experienced guys. Sort of a funny lineup in the game. You figure you're going to get your offense with this lineup from Williams or from Reese. That's for three for Williams. Bobby Kremens is really upset with his team. Got to get out and cover Williams on that one. Williams has eight points now for the Tar Heels. Great pass by Barry. Best has had a tough time with that shot today. Hasn't been able to get it to go. Barry made the right decision, though. Get the ball to Travis Best. Tremendous three-point shooter. He just hasn't been able to get it to go in the basket. The right decision by Barry, even when you make the right decision, sometimes it doesn't work out. Cherry gets it inside to Sullivan. Nice dish to Reese. And Reese is fouled. on Martise Moore. And how many times are we going to see that from Reese in this half? Slash into the basket against the zone. Great pass by Sullivan. Draws the defense. That penetration to the inside of the zone. Moore's got to come over to help. Can't do it. Reese now with 15 points. Salvador is out of the game. Brian Reese averages 11. He's got 15, as you said, today. Brian Hill checks back in. Barry goes out. Rodel comes back in for Carolina. And Cherry will go out. I want to remind you to stay tuned for the Players of the Game Award brought to you by Nations Bank. checks in. Mackey goes out with his four personals and Martise Moore will get a break. Mackey really hasn't been a big factor in this basketball game. He's only got two points and four rebounds. In fact, Ivano Newville has more points. Ryan Reese driving inside. Montross slaps that one away. Last touch by Carolina. It appeared for a moment, we'll have to see what they do next time down the court, but it appeared for a moment that Georgia Tech might have been going to a triangle and two, trying to guard Williams and Reese man to man. Georgia Tech doing a nice job switching defenses. Best picks up his dribble to Barry. 
it over to Hill. Now Best is left alone. Oh, oh great rebound. And Farr scores again. Best just can't get the ball to go in the basket from behind the three-point range. Another wide, wide open shot. Excellent pass by Barry. however, hasn't scored in the second half. Oh, he's got two. That's 15. And he misses his first free throw in the last 19 attempts. First free throw miss in this tournament. Escort by offering these four LX models, all equipped with these great features for one low price. And now we're also offering an easy two-year lease for just $1.99 a month. That's your choice of four well-equipped escorts for just $1.99 a month. Ford Escort. Now it's easier than ever to buy or lease America's most popular small car. When some folks think of San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge comes to mind. But for me, it's that great taste of sourdough bread. Now Hardy's introduces Frisco Grilled Chicken on sourdough bread. Tender whole grilled chicken breast, crisp bacon, plump juicy tomatoes and Swiss cheese, all on grilled sourdough bread. The ...out of the basketball game. Mackey's back in. James Forrest has hit his last four shots. So while the inside guys for North Carolina are struggling, Forrest keeps going. Forrest with 26 points. It's a great job getting out of the trap. shouting, hey, 
Parsons to his team. Morris seconds left. On the Morris got ball. lost just for a second and wanted the ball. Now they jump out on him. Well, he didn't get lost. He knew where he was. His teammates couldn't <laughs> find him. He lost Carolina. Morris with the rebound. Mackey with the tap. Georgia Tech suddenly coming up big on the offensive board. Reese has it stripped from behind. Lynch on the baseline. Oh, nice move by Lynch. And he's fouled. And that fouls on Forrest. That's three on Forrest. George Lynch. Again, Brian Reese driving into the lane. That's a great job by Barry to take the ball from behind. Lynch, however, gets it. Forrest gets the foul because he swings that arm. He's got three fouls. Trying to cut the lead to five. Montross with the tip. Just talked about how the big guys aren't getting it done inside. They get it done real quickly. Four-point game. Trying to keep it away from Travis Best. North Carolina turning up the heat defensively. Got to watch the five-second count. having a tough time getting the ball. He's coming back for it. Got two screens. Montross jumps out on him. Here's Barry. Mackey's got to go to the basket. Nice job by Rowe. Force his best to give up the ball. Rebound by Mackey and the foul. Montross. Montross gets the foul. His first. His first foul. As aggressively as he's played inside. Look at this pass. Barry again finds the open guy. And if you're going to find an open guy, that's the one you want. Mackey with a tremendous rebound. Mackey's really had a tough game. But battling when he needs to. There's Barry. No look pass. Forrest misses a shot. Mackey, however, doing a great job over George Lynch. Not too many guys rebound the ball when George Lynch has inside position. Mackey at the line shooting one and one. As you look at Bobby Kremens working his bench. That's Drew Barry's talking to you. Better believe Barry's not going to be out long. Mackey has not shot free throws well in the tournament. Under five minutes to play. Martise Moore back in the basketball game. We're back to the 1-3 with Chaser now. Good block out. Excellent block out by Forrest. Best will push it. North Carolina's done a nice job with the man-to-man -man defense. Georgia Tech really having to work on the offensive end. Bobby Kremens yelling for his club to move, move, roll. Now, Martise Moore hasn't been in the ball game for a while. You wonder how confident he's going to be to take the open jump shot. Great defense by Carolina. Shot clock at 15. Gotta watch the five-second count. And this foul on Sullivan. That's his second. That's really a tough break for the North Carolina Tar Heels. They were doing a tremendous job in the half-court defense, contesting every pass, every cut. Ryan Reese and George Lynch come back into the game. Montross and Sullivan will go to the bench. Travis Best at the line, shooting one and one. He has eight points this afternoon. Obviously, the free throws become very important for Georgia Tech. Mackey missed the front end of the one and one the last time. Best, who was at the line just a few moments ago. Played a fine game. Oh, sure has. He has had the ability to find the open man, and when you're playing against the North Carolina pressure, you have to be able to do that. Barry's going to check back into the game after the free throw. Best makes them both. Barry comes back and replaces Travis Best. Bobby Kremen's trying to get his point guard just a few seconds. Catch his win before we head into the stretch. Four minutes to go in the championship game, 68-62. Georgia Tech. Here's Lynch. Oh, tough shot. Forrest with another rebound. Lead past the board. Moore did a nice job tracking that one down. Barry doesn't see the track. Roto with the steal. Roto's going to pick up the ball. 
Well, he tried to dribble it. He has to pick it up. Oh, they had a layup if he just picks up the ball, Tim. Brian Reese slices through for the basket. That slashing move by Reese really does a nice job picking up his teammate. Reese had 16 yesterday. He's got 18 points today. Now Georgia Tech is trying to run some time off the clock. They passed up a couple of open shots. Rodel is fouled by Hill. One of the things that you have to be careful of if you're the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, you get the ball down the court if you pass up open shots. If you're not looking to score, then that makes the North Carolina defense all that much more effective. George Lynn steps in for the steal. Hill gets the foul against Rodel. Hill goes up. Travis Best comes back in. Hill will go out of the game. Now, what Hill did a good job of right there, even though he got the foul, Tim, he didn't let Rodel get the ball up on the board, so rodel has got to go and earn it from the free throw line. But if you're Georgia Tech, you can't be so concerned with running time off the clock that you lose your aggressiveness on the offensive end. Rodel misses that one, so that becomes a very good foul by Hill. You have to maintain your ag aggressiveness on the offensive end. If they're going to give you an open shot, you probably have to take it because if you're passing up open shots, that makes that defense awfully, awfully tough. Oh, he missed two. Misses them both. Best gets off his shot. He's fouled by Montross. Best took it into traffic, threw it up as soon as he felt the contact. It's only two on the big fella. Cherry comes in for Rodel. Bobby Krimpins is having a discussion with Drew Barry. Looks like he's giving him a massage. I <laughs> talk about Krimpins being an emotional coach. He's standing over there. Had Drew Barry by the shoulders. Best now has 11 points. a six-point lead with 2.50 to go in the game. Georgia Tech going after the upset. Now a word from our good friends at Bud Light. North Carolina, he has 18 points, but keep in mind at the other end, he's been tangling with Forrest. And when we talked about Georgia Tech making those free throws, North Carolina has been making hay at the line this entire tournament. They made 13 of their first 14 free throws. They've missed their last five. Here we go, 2.45 to go in the championship game. Georgia Tech back to the straight zone. Williams left alone. That's a great job by Barry, running out after that basketball. Georgia Tech basketball. Last touch by Carolina. And Travis Best's hustle gets the ball for Bobby Kremens. Remember now, Georgia Tech's had three turnovers on inbounds plays, so getting the ball inbounds isn't always the simplest thing in the world against North Carolina. Plenty of time, plenty of time. Expect North Carolina to trap. Georgia Tech by six, 2.15 to go in the game. Again, you want to run time off the clock, but you want to take advantage of the opportunities that they give you. Excellent ball move. Shot clock at 20. It's only a six-point game. Here's the tough play. Forrest with the screen. Shot clock at 10. Here goes Best. Oh, nice pass. Possession arrow belongs to North Carolina. I think Mackey expected more pressure than he got. Didn't get any, really, and so he shot the ball all the way over the basket. This is a great job by Best to get it in here. Mackey's all alone. He shoots the ball all the way over the basket. Two. Rodel to Lynn. 
inch. That's a box and one. They're guarding Donald Williams again. Reese, followed by Montross. North Carolina trying to get a timeout. It's not called. One and a half minutes to go. Georgia Tech 70, North Carolina 66. Georgia Tech got an excellent look at the basket. Last trip down, they just missed the layup. He's triple teamed. Donald Williams commits the foul against Drew Barry, I believe. As pushes Drew Barry. He's on the other side of the court. That's three on Williams. Drew Barry, a 78% free throw shooter. Drew Barry, the red shirt freshman. That is the 10th foul against Carolina. So they're in the double bonus now. Barry will be at the line shooting two. It's a four-point ball game. Barry's got nine points. George Tech really doing the job from the line. 17 of 19, Georgia Tech in this basketball game from the free throw line. Barry does not play like a freshman. And rolls the second one in. North Carolina needs to score quickly. Don't have to go for strictly the threes just yet. Here's Lynch for three. A great hustle, great hustle. It keeps the ball alive. Reese saves it and makes the three-pointer. hasn't he done today? What a second half by Reese. 72-69 with 53 seconds left. We'll return after this from the Atlantic Coast Conference. In this basketball game, every foul by North Carolina is going to result in two free throws for Georgia Tech. You can better believe that Malcolm Mackey is probably going to get some opportunities from the free throw line. First thing Georgia Tech has to do is get it inbound. Barry has trouble, the five count. No, it's no, a they timeout. Call timeout. Travis they call Best timeout. called timeout. Travis Best called timeout. Georgia Tech has one timeout left. Carolina has two. And you don't know how important that's going to be as we try to play these last 53.6 seconds, but Georgia Tech can't get the basketball inbounds. They've turned it over three times earlier in this game trying to get the ball inbounds, and that time they had to spend a timeout. Not much movement by the Georgia Tech players trying to inbound that ball. As the team came off, Bobby Kremen saying, what the heck is going on? Watch this. Bobby Kremens is thinking that it was a little short for a five-second count. He says he didn't call for a timeout. Well, Bobby better be thankful that he did because we were getting pretty close to that five-second violation, and they had no shot at getting that ball in. 53.6 seconds remain in this ball game. Georgia Tech leads 72-69. It certainly has been a game of runs. when we showed you our Pepsi game summary that Donald Williams hasn't shot the ball very well from the perimeter. And of course, North Carolina playing the ball game without Derek Phelps. He can run. He can run. Here we go. Got to get the ball in balance. That's the first step. Barry gets it to best. Nice entry. Excellent entry. Now you got to get it over half court. And fouled by Reese. Now you have to make the free throw. So... Georgia Tech executed getting the ball inbounds and getting it up to court. North Carolina, that's a very good play. You get the foul. Not too much eye. Less than about five seconds. Tick off the clock. Guys, you need a towel out there. Salvadori goes out of the game. Sullivan goes back out as well. Williams is in the game along with Montross, Lynch, Reese, and Rodel. Now, even if he makes these two free throws, it's a five-point game. So North Carolina with the three-point shot still very, very much alive. Travis Best, six of seven at the line today. He'll be shooting two. They're in the double bonus. Georgia Tech bench saying watch out for Donald Williams. I think that's a pretty good idea. He has 13 points. That's four below his average. Makes 
them both. 74 69. 45 seconds left. Still have time to take the two. Three more for Reese. Unbelievable. What yes, a basketball game. game he's had. Between Forrest and Reese. Wow. You're still in the portion of the ball game where you have to defend the two. That was a shot against pressure. Reese just drills it. Watch Forrest get out on him. A little bit tentative, maybe. Could have taken a faster step out there, but still, he's right where he needs to be. The shot goes in. North Carolina with one timeout left. Georgia Tech with one timeout left. Reese has had trouble getting the ball in. It's time they get it to best. That's where you want it to go. To Barry. And he's got to get rid of it. Across the timeline. Forrest is fouled by George Lynch. That'll be five for George Lynch. So Lynch will sit down with eight points as he fouls out of the game. Forrest, four for four from the line today. Comes into the game as only a 68% free throw shooter. He has 26 points. And I guess it's only fitting with the way James Forrest has played, making every key basket that he goes to the line in a very critical situation. Forrest had 27 against Duke. 26 against Clemson. He has 26 in this game. The last time a player scored 20 or more points in all three ACC tournament games was a teammate of yours, Wally Walker of Virginia. That was the 1976 tournament. 1976 tournament where Virginia came in as the number six seed, beat North Carolina in the championship game. Georgia Tech, the number six seed in this tournament. Brown Jackets, center of the screen. Carolyn Kremens. This big free throw. Forrest makes it a three-point game. Three-point basket ties it. 30 seconds left. Reese wants it, has it, fires. Barry comes up with it. 17 seconds left to Forrest. And the foul. Fouls on Donald Williams. He fouled Martise Moore. That's four fouls on Williams. An excellent foul. That was an excellent foul. Got him just before the pass to Forrest. Now, we're still, we still have a three-point game. There's 16.3 16 seconds left in the game. Martise Moore, a 73% free throw shooter. He's two for two today. He'll be shooting two here. The freshman drills it. 76-72. Marquis Moore with a big smile on his face. No time for smiling yet. 16 seconds is an age. Big free throws. Calabria. Williams gets it. 12 seconds left. This is for three. Back out to Williams. Boy, what a smart play by Montross to get it back out for the three. Puts it out there to Williams again. He hits it, but it's over. Georgia Tech wins the ACC Tournament Championship.
Great effort. Good luck to you. Thanks, Wade. Let's get back to Paul Cameron. Dan, thanks so much. Uh, sophomore sensation, I have said. Uh, Lenny Bias, the last sophomore to win the Everett Case Award in an ACC tournament weekend. He did so nine years ago. As the awards are presented behind us, we want to thank you for joining us throughout this bizarre but incredible weekend here in Charlotte. The 1993 ACC Championship trophy goes to the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. The third time in history, the sixth seed has won it. Final score again, 77-75. On behalf of Dan Bonner, Tim Brandt, Bucky Waters, I'm Paul Cameron. You've been watching exclusive coverage of ACC basketball on the Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports Network.